Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today we're actually out in Colorado. We're shooting a car commercial and the camera we're using today is a Canon C70. Now I've done quite a few videos on the Canon C70 on my channel and you know, it's getting a little long in the tooth. You could say it's been around for a while. And so I kind of wanted to raise the question of is now the perfect time to sell your Canon C70. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So kind of how I want to frame this video is it's almost gonna be like a little mini review. And at the end, I'm gonna summarize by saying whether or not I still think this camera fits my needs or if I'm really kind of ready to move on to something new. So starting with the pros, some of the things I really love about this camera, I love the size of it. It's a bit of a compact camera. Uh, it's easy to run on gimbals. Um, it's, uh, it's got kind of everything you need built in. It's got ND filters. It's got a great audio solution. And you can just run it stripped down, hands out if you want or you can kind of rig it out with a cinema lens, focus motors, a cage. Uh, the cage I always like to run, I've, I did a review on it, but it's the Bright Tangerine. Uh, I think it's the expert cage. Comes with all the stuff you need. So if you are kind of building out a bigger kit, this is a really nice solution. The map box we're running today is the uh, Bright Tangerine Misfit Atom. And I love it because it's like little tiny compact and it's easy to get the proper balance under gimbal. Uh, the lens we're on today is the DZO 20 to 55. Anyways, back to the review of the camera. In terms of image quality, for me, it's really great. I don't find myself ever really wishing I had way better image quality. Now, I've shot on cameras from lowest of the low, most basic uh, cameras there are, all the way up to basically some of the best cameras there are, like the uh, Alexa Mini OF or you know some of these cameras that cost upwards of $100,000 for the package. Now, is there a difference between a camera like that and a camera like this? Yeah, there is, for sure, definitely. That camera is gonna be better for quite a few things, especially in a proper cinema application. I actually have a comparison video on my channel where I did a little comparison with the C70 and the uh, Alexa Mini OF, if you're curious on that. But the things that I like in the beginning are still the things I like now. The image quality still holds up to what I'm looking for. 4K is great for the vast majority of my deliverables and um, all the functionality that's built into it, all the things I've come to know and love about Canon cinema cameras, like the NDs built in, like the audio built in, uh, it makes it really versatile. It makes it a really versatile tool. So I can do everything from a corporate interview all the way to shooting uh, car commercials for national car brands. So now let's jump into some of the uh, sort of the cons or some of the things that I would be looking for an improvement maybe in a future iteration of this camera. Okay, so now jumping into a few of the cons or some of the things I would like to see as an improvement in a future iteration of a small form factor Canon cinema camera. Now for me, this form factor, this sort of like DSLR type form factor is something that I think works well for a lot of people. For me personally, I would prefer like a box style cinema camera, something that it kind of allows you to build it out the way you like it. So for me, when I'm rigging on the gimbal, having proper side mount points without having to run a cage is kind of cool. Some of the other cameras on the market have that. And then especially when you're doing hard mount shots and you might want to run like magic arms or baby pins off your camera, this camera and this form factor, it works okay, but I would prefer something that's a bit more boxy. Uh, whereas if you notice, when you're balancing on a gimbal, if you want to just, just walk in close. So you see how um, there's less room on this side and there's more room on this side. You kind of have to offset your, or use counterbalance when you're putting it on a gimbal. On a big gimbal like the Ronin 2, it's kind of fine. On a small gimbal like the Ronin S or something like that, it's doable but it is a little bit of a limitation. I would prefer something that's a little bit more symmetrical. Another like nitpicky thing that drives me insane, I really hate, uh, you can't see it on this camera because it's got a full cage. On the bottom, there's three holes, one three eighths and two quarter twenties, and they're sideways. Usually they're front to back. So oftentimes if you're running say like a Manfrotto or an archetype tripod, you're just gonna have one screw holding the thing and you kind of get like where your camera's twisting. I really, really don't like that. So the majority of the time I do find myself using this cage. And that was one of the things that um, this cage solved for me right in the beginning. So in terms of resolution, one thing that I would like for a future camera, like I said, the 4K deliverable is generally perfectly fine for everything I'm doing these days. However, I would like, um, I don't ever deliver in 1080 anymore, like ever. So when I'm shooting this commercial work, a lot of times we'll end up cropping and reframing slightly. So having a camera that's 6K or even 8K would be nice. I definitely uh, wouldn't want that to sacrifice the frame rates. One of the things I love about this is the 120 frames per second. So I'd really like that to be carried over where we could still do it full sensor, but like maybe having that available at 6K or higher resolution would be nice because you can it allow you to deliver in 4K, but still sort of crop and reframe. Last thing we're gonna talk about, uh, an area for improvement 
would just kind of be the overall durability of the camera. Now, I realize this is probably a super niche use case, you could say. Um, I'm kind of one of those people that uses and abuses my gear. I definitely don't baby it. I've had this out on an off-road shoot where we were going so hard, I actually snapped the Ronin two in half and the camera took a fall, ripped the screen off. Actually, earlier on this shoot, another time, completely unrelated to what I was just talking about, we had the camera hard mounted and the driver kind of hit the side and once you know it, it ripped the screen off again. And a third time, actually, I was actually just using the camera perfectly normal. The earlier iterations of this camera, they had a pretty janky hinge and it was like, it got really rickety. And so I had to take that into can and have that service. So that kind of makes three separate times I've had an issue with the screen. I don't think most people have had three issues with their screens. Mine is probably unique to myself and the way I use my gear. However, I'm not a fan of this. This, it just, this hinge, it, it's too, I don't know. It doesn't work for me. We gotta find a different way of doing it. Maybe make it double attachment or something like, you know, where it's a little more sturdy. Uh, you know, these are not cheap cameras. They're, they're built for professionals. So I'd really like it to see, you know, for people that aren't so gentle on their gear, maybe they're shooting in tough environments or something like that something that's a bit more sturdy and can handle a little bit of use and abuse. So that begs the question, late 2023, early 2024 is now the perfect time to sell your Canon C70. I would say it's up to you. I own two Canon C70s for me right now. They're still amazing tools. Honestly, I find myself using these tools on every single shoot. There's never a time that I'm not using these cameras. Even if I'm using other camera systems like RED cameras or some other brand, or I'm using my C500, um, which I actually use these quite a bit more than my C500 because they've done so many firmware updates, with the raw update, uh, the fact that it's gonna do full sensor 120 frames per second. There's so many great things to love about this camera that I find myself still using them all the time. Now, if a new Canon camera comes out that's, you know, whatever, I don't, and just so you guys know, I have worked with Canon in the past, I've done a little bit of sponsored work. I don't know anything about any cameras coming out and that's like, hand on to the Bible truth. I wish I did. Canon, hit me up if you guys wanna do something. But I don't know anything here. We're gonna walk this way, we're shooting. Yep. So to answer the question, for me, no. I'm not selling my C70s. I'm keeping them in the lineup. And if we add some extra cameras in the future, then so be it. And we'll, we'll see how we adjust from there. You guys can't see this car yet. Coming soon, coming soon. Okay, we're back. But anyways, guys, thanks for sticking around watching this video. Hopefully you found it valuable. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you guys own the C70, if it was a good camera for you, maybe you already sold yours. Let me know, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let's make it a little discussion. So if you like this kind of video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.